Xavier Porter, Shoot the Fire, Brooklyn Fights, back in the building with the one and only Eddie Hearn. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling alright. I saw you last Friday. Yes, yes. I flew back to London, had a couple of days there, and now I'm back. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Really excited about Friday night. You know, very excited about the career of Devin Haney. I think it's a really tough fight. I think uh, a lot of people probably underestimating Abdullayev because everybody's talking about Devin Haney. Mm -hmm. But these are the kind of fights where you've got to really show your metal and your class because if you're just hype, you won't win these fights. Mm -hmm. And obviously the winner is mandatory to Lomachenko. So yes. That's, that's great in itself. Michael Hunter against Sergey Kuzman, I can't wait for. It's mm -hmm. a great heavyweight fight. And I know the one you like as well, uh, Hardy against Serrano. Yes, sir. <laughs> one of the biggest all women fight out there mm -hmm. right now. So really excited for the card. Some great stuff beneath that as well. Um, you're losing off Olympic gold medalist from Kazakhstan. He's got his first 10 rounder in a tough fight. Wow. Raymond Ford, young top US amateur. Uh, Majidov, who's our new heavyweight sign-in from Azerbaijan, three-time Olympic, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, three-time amateur world champion. Um, yeah, big card, big card. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Okay. Outside of this, October 5th, how impressive is this fight with Sergey Derevchenko and Triple G? I think it's a great fight. You know, Derevchenko got beat by Danny Jacobs, put up a good fight. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had many pro fights. He's had hundreds of amateur fights. But I think in terms of his pro experience, you know, he had a good fight with Cole Kai last time out, got some good rounds. Mm -hmm. So I expect him to be improving as a pro rather than deteriorating as a pro. And I think his style will gel really well with Triple G. You know, gotcha. Neither of them will take a step backwards. And I think October 5th will be a great, great fight for the vacant world middleweight title. Okay. Now, Usyk is coming back. Can you tell us what yeah. date that is? Yeah, October the 12th. That's the week after Triple G. Tyrone Spung. Um, obviously, a lot of people know him as one of the best kickboxers of all time. Mm. But also as a heavyweight, he's now number four in the WBO. Wow. Which Usyk is mandatory for. I think he's got 15 wins with 14 knockouts, something mm. like that. He's a huge puncher. It's going to be tricky for, for Usyk. We wanted a proper test. Someone that actually comes to try and win. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. You know, this this guy, he's undefeated, don't know anything else other than winning. And But I believe that Usyk is a special fighter, and I think he'll show that in Chicago. K is it KSI? KSI Logan Paul. And Logan Paul. It's causing nightmares for all the hardcore boxing fans. Man, listen. <laughs> we did, we did uh, around, I think it's like 4,000 in the first day of pre-sale yesterday. Wow. Crazy. You know, we didn't... We don't see those kind of numbers outside of Anthony Joshua and those sort of big nights. So, um, you know, we knew when we got involved with this, we'd get a little bit of criticism from the hardcore boxing fan. I said to both guys, um, if you want to do this, you've got to do it properly. Both turn pro, no head guards, 10 ounce gloves. And you respect the code of the sport. Yeah. They do that, they're doing that. And there'll be some world championship fights on the undercard pros. And, uh, you know, like, the, just a new world, you know, like, obviously you're driven by views in what you do. I was watching these guys the other day, Logan Paul put something out of him just pretending to DJ. Mm -hmm. it nine million views on his YouTube channel. Crazy. Like, you know, you, you know, like, the, how difficult that is. Yeah. It's like, so you can't ignore this potential audience. So when he's engaging with nine million potential fight fans, mm -hmm. you know, the, the cynic will say, yeah, but will they actually stay in the sport? maybe like what should we not try yeah do you know what I mean like you can't yeah. just say they won't well why not try it mm -hmm. we've got to try to attract a new audience so that's what we're doing now if if 10% of the 9 million stick it's 900,000 new fans that's pretty good if 5% stick <laughs> that's 450,000 new fans mm -hmm. so let it happen let it unfold mm -hmm. you know it's not going to be Mayweather against Pacquiao yeah. but it's still of a decent level with two guys coming to the sport that bring in a whole new audience. So we're doing it. Like it or not, we're doing it. I got it's going to be big. Would you consider maybe tapping into maybe having like celebrity boxing matches take place or sure. that's something you want to kind of... That's why I wanted to do about the pro thing and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I didn't want a white qualify. I, I don't believe that, but you know, if you're going to bring this 9 million or whatever, the, the more worldwide audience to boxing, you've got to show them mm -hmm. quality of a sport mm -hmm. that we love, right? So. I don't want them to tune in and just see like two guys. Like, <laughs> you know, I want them to see yeah. Devin Haney, Billy Joe Saunders. It's a like real, this. real boxing. Yeah, yeah, so they can actually engage with it and say, mm -hmm. do you know what? I love boxing. Boxing's great. So that's, you know, I probably could have made this bigger by doing mm -hmm. all YouTubers and celebrity boxing. Yeah. But I want to try and engage the two audiences, you know, or engage the two sports, if you like. Yeah. They are really separate sports. You also see so, what happens from there, in a sense. Yeah, but I don't, you know, I could have just done, like like I said, like loads of YouTube, yeah. but it's not, that's, 
I respect boxing. So I've got to get the balance right. This is quirky for me to do this. Okay. But I feel as though we have to do this because we've got to wake up and we've got to try and generate more interest in the sport. But if while well, we're generating that interest, at least let them see great boxing mm -hmm. rather than just two guys yeah. swinging away. I mean, times are changing. You want to expand the sport to, yeah. to, 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 I would say, to people out there who may not be in tune with it right, right now, you know? And it also helps not only the um, your brand, your promotion team, but also the, the platform itself, the zone. Yeah, of course. Well, the zone. You know, when you look at the, the type of audience that a streaming platform would engage with, mm -hmm. that's the same audience as that these guys engage with. It's right. the young guys who can digest content on YouTube mm -hmm. or apps or you know or digital space. So it's a perfect mix for the zone. Mm -hmm. So obviously they were very keen to do it, mm -hmm. but also they are a boxing platform. They don't want to be. You know, an entertainment white collar platform. So mm -hmm. this is why they liked the concept of how this all came together. Okay, December seventh, Anthony Joshua, yeah. um, Andy Ruiz, going into the fight. How hard was it to, to make the rematch? Uh, well, it was contracted. Yeah. So there was a lot of people saying Joshua should have a warm up fight first. And maybe in an ideal world you would, but when it's contracted and you've got a chance to win all your belts back in a fight where you're still favourite, mm -hmm. you really got to be taking it. You know, Joshua's always taken risks. So it was never even discussed not taking this rematch. Gotcha. So it's a very difficult fight mentally, you know, and obviously physically got stopped last time out. Mm -hmm. So, But the focus is very different this time, you know. Doesn't mean he's going to win, mm -hmm. but like last time, every time we had a meeting, every time we spoke to the media, it was, mm -hmm. when's the wilder fight happening? Oh yeah, when you beat Andy, mm -hmm. like what are you going to, so it was like, how can you prepare for war mm -hmm. when you're not expecting war, you know? And I think that's what, when it all unfolded, it was almost like, yeah. shit, what the, and he what got hurt, hurt. Yeah, he never yeah. recovered, rather mm -hmm. than when he boxed Klitschko, yes. it was like, I'm going to have to go through fire in yes. this fight, and he did. What do you think the difference was that? Because like like you just, just mentioned, like, fight at Clisco is a whole other breed. Motiv motivation, okay. you know, and not, motivation might be the wrong word because he was de he's always desperate to win. Okay. But when he was supposed to fight Jarrell Miller, he was really motivated for that fight because Miller said some things, personal stuff about it. He wanted, him. To, he wanted to <laughs> knock him out. And then when he got Ruiz, mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't stop training. Like, he didn't want to win less. Okay. He just, I think it was just a bit deflating. Temperament kind of went yeah, down. Yeah, and, and when he saw Ruiz, it was not, you know, it was like, oh, he's a nice guy. And everyone's yeah. saying, oh, Ruiz, nice yeah. guy. Can't beat you, but, you know. So he then, fell for the banana in the tailpipe. Probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. But yeah. I think next time out, now he knows yeah. one how dangerous Ruiz is, but also yeah. he knows he's got to win and he's motivated. And this is so good because it's the first time in a long time no one's talking about the fight after. Gotcha. You know, they're all saying, well, this is the only fight. No one's, no one's talking about Wilder. Mm -hmm. It's just, can he beat Ruiz or can't he? Mm -hmm. So, December 7, it's a fight of the year. It's going to be epic. Solid. I mean, in Saudi Arabia, it's amazing that you bring a boxing, particularly to that particular uh, area yeah, in, in the world. Another thing that we've had um, some stick for, criticism, you know, people talk about human rights. Countries are allowed to try and change. Yes. And, and they're trying to showcase the country in a more positive way. Mm -hmm. But not every country is perfect. Every country has their problems. But from a boxing sense, this is an opportunity to take our sport mm -hmm. into a new market. They're investing more money than any other country in boxing. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to stop there. They want to make Saudi Arabia the home of boxing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I they've got it. intent. I get it. I get so it. <laughs> they're going to be trying to get every mega fight there. Mm. So if we don't do it, someone else is going to do it. So yeah. it's another thing like with the YouTubers, we just got to be one step ahead of the game. Got you on that one. Let's say this. Mexico is a big country, yeah. huge country. They love boxing. Yeah. What are your thoughts on having a uh, well, huge fight there? Yeah, I've done two fights there now, one in Tijuana, one in Hermosilia. Mm -hmm. Atmosphere, like, I mean, Britain's special for atmosphere. Mexico's <laughs> right up there. Gotcha. True hardcore boxing fans with boxing in their blood. The money's not really there, okay. you know, on the gate and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but the volume is. You know, we did Estrada, there was like 9,000 people there, you know, like, it's a flight, um, super flyweight. So they love their boxing, and um, I want to do as many shows in Mexico as I can because I love the people, and they truly understand and respect and love the sport. Okay. Two more questions. Tevin Farmer, yeah. I know you mentioned previously that you're looking to hopefully get him to unify mm -hmm. with other champions in the division. You got Jamel Herring, Miguel Burchell. How soon can you get these fights to take place? I think next will be Jojo Diaz. Okay. The fight we're trying to make for November, December of this year. Um, and then I think he has to unify. You know, he hasn't had those. He's, he's, he's been very, very active 
but he hasn't had those breakout profile fights yet. Mm -hmm. Diaz is a nice step in that direction. Then he has to try and unify. Okay. Um, there's talk of Mikey Garcia possibly signing with you, as well as other fighters. Is there anything you want yeah, to share right now? A lot of talks going on. <laughs> I mean, Mikey, I've been talking to for a long time. I think he's holding out for the Manny Pacquiao fight. See if he can get that. Okay. But I'm sure you'll see him fight with Matri one day. Okay. Any last words? All good, mate. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy Friday night. All right. Get yourself down there to the Hulu Theatre, and if you're not coming, make sure you tune in live on the Zone. All right. Thanks again. Cheers, mate.